So when it comes to converting sales, if I share with you a little bit about myself, uh, okay, great, Victoria. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Yeah, I've been in I've been in the business of sales because if you have a business, then you've been in the business of sales since the age of 19. And I've been, I ran my own business. I had uh, one job and at 18, I went into hospital. Both my kidneys failed. My left kidney, they said, exploded inside of me. My right kidney, they had to puncture it and drain it. And that was the end of my sporting career. It's like, okay, wow, came out of hospital. What am I going to do now? And I went into the health and wellness field, went into training athletes, which was uh, pretty much a natural progression, which a lot of people can agree. And very, very quickly, my KPIs, so to speak, if you've heard of KPIs, my key performance indicators in sales were in the 90%. That meant if we sit down together 90% of the time, someone was going to buy something from me. And that wasn't really any skill or any learned thing that I went through. Since then, I've put that into what I call journey-based selling. So if you're just getting on here, this, this uh, sales system that I created is called journey-based selling. And Jennifer says, my intention is to generate sales to 10000 to replace my income be able to have more freedom with my time. Totally. Great intention. Great intention. And so uh, please, by the way, hit the share button. If you're on here, share this on your pages. Um, invite people to like the Influ Influencing Millions Facebook page, which is where we'll go with lots of trainings in the future. So you can always get those trainings and know when to show up and where to show up. So please go ahead and hit the share button. And um, eternally grateful for that. So journey-based selling is what I called it. And ultimately, it was all about the destination. For me, when I sat down with someone, it was always, why are you here and how can I help you? So can you hit in the comments if you have any hangups and if you've ever had any hangups about sales in terms of like, oh, I don't want to be sold to, other people don't want to be sold to, I don't want to reach out to them. People have told me like, no, thank you very much in... Uh, not necessarily that nice of a term. If you've had any kind of situation where sales has been been daunting for you or you just haven't really um, felt comfortable doing it, then go ahead and share that in the comments, please. Jennifer, my intention is to generate sales of $10,000 to replace my income. That's a great intention. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Jess says, my intention is to be of service. Beautiful. Yeah, so if you had any situation in the past where you have felt, my niche is something I don't want to be pushy about. Awesome, Rose. Rosalia, thank you, thank you, thank you for sharing that. Yeah, if you feel any way yucky about that situation, um, please go ahead and like that post or that comment. That's, uh, that's such a big one. So can you share with me what your niche is, please? Just go ahead and put that in the comments as well. Rosalia says, my niche is something I don't want to be pushy about. That's so, so, so common, right? And when we think about the destination first, we've got to know ultimately where we're going with the client. And it's not a sale, to give away a little bit of a clue. It's definitely not a sale. So I just wanna give time for that. So whatever your niche is, just go ahead and hit it in the comments, please, if you don't mind sharing that. Or even if you wanna stay big picture, that's totally fine. So my thoughts are that we want to take someone on a ride. Our whole goal here is to say, take someone on a ride when it comes to how we navigate a sales conversation so that we can have a conversation that converts. So Rosalia says, abuse survivors. I teach parents how to educate their kids on body safety, boundaries, and consent. That's awesome. Yeah, so not wanting to be pushy or salesy in this area. 
I can see the frame there that you're looking through. Okay, so if we prepare for the ride, what that means is that we have to we have to go on a journey. When I talk about journey-based selling, there's so much people think sales is a straight line. You make an offer, they make a response. You tell them about a thing, they make a response. You invite them or you sell to them and they decide, they buy or they don't. And that's really a straight line type of sales. The journey-based selling approach really says that we have to identify where they are and where they wanna be. We've all heard that before. I'm gonna share with you a model that I use. It's a psychological model, and anyone who's in therapy or in psychology or who has done training in those areas might notice this model. And I uh, guarantee by the end of today, you're gonna learn a, a lot more about stages of psychology for whoever's in front of you, including yourself. So then when you understand the stage and the journey that someone's on in their own psychology, we can realize when and what to engage with the person in, whether that is a sale, when's the right time to offer the sale. Uh, Victoria says, I love psychology, yep, <laughs> uh, that's awesome. And so that way we can match what we're offering and how we're presenting something with the client, with the person. So can I just um, buy a show of thumbs ups, please, if you feel that you don't like to be sold to, or that you know people in your niche, people who you want to sell to, people who are in your audience, would say that. They're like, I don't wanna be sold to. No one likes to be sold to. If you have heard that, if you agree with that, just hit, smash the thumbs up button on, on the Facebook Live, please. I guess if, if you haven't heard that or you don't feel that, then go ahead and hit the heart button, just so we know where we're at. And I, I can kind of get a sense of the delay. <laughs> I just want to make sure that I'm coming through okay. Okay, so we got some hearts, tons of hearts. People saying, nope, no experience of that. Some thumbs ups, okay, cool. Thank you for being honest. Some thumbs up, awesome. So here's the situation. I wanna dispel this myth that people don't like to be sold to. And Rosalia, since you're playing, on, playing along here, can you, if you like music, can you let me know like your favorite musician or band right now? Some Someone that you like that's playing right now. Jess says, I think people don't want to feel like they are being sold to. Interesting. That's a good point. I wonder if you wanna elaborate on that a little bit more, Jess. People don't like to wanna feel in terms of they don't wanna feel what exactly. By the way, I do Facebook Lives like this. I love participation. Tito Puentes. Okay, great. Thanks, Rosalia. So Rosalia says, Tito Puentes. Um, I don't know who that is. But here's the situation. If you don't like to be sold to, I want to dispel that right now. I think it's a huge myth, and I'm willing to, to, to go to sit in the fire, so to speak, with anyone about that myth. And I think that it's completely false. Here's the situation. If I had tickets, we're both, we're always engaging in sales on both sides. And I think people are aware of that. But, Jess, I want to see what's after that but. <laughs> I think people are aware of that. But, I agree with Jess. They don't want to be sold something they don't want though I like being offered something I need that I find being of value. Ding, ding, ding. Exactly. So consider this. If I had tickets to go see in the VIP section with backstage passes to Tito Puentes, I hope I'm saying it correctly, and I didn't call you 
Rosalia. I had tickets. I couldn't go to the show. Or I had an extra ticket. I had an extra four tickets for friends. And I was like, mm, you know what? I'm not sure Rosalia wants me to call her about this. She doesn't want to be called on a sales call. She doesn't want to be hit up on Facebook in a private message. She doesn't want someone reaching out who doesn't necessarily know them. I might know Victoria. I might know, might know someone that knows her, but I'm not really sure if she wants to to be reached out to like that. And we got a lot of people saying they don't want to be pressured. They want to, uh, if it's something that they want, then for sure. And that is exactly the point. So when we understand where someone is in their thinking, then we can deliver things with what they want. The problem with that, as we go into this psychology model, is how limiting that can be. Jennifer says, I don't like to be pushy with sales. That's how some people define sales, which is why it's a struggle for so many people. Jess, very good point. Great point. Exactly. So can I dive into the psychology? Give me some thumbs ups if you're ready to dive into psychology. Smashing the thumbs up. Okay, awesome. So I'm going to share with you what what's called a trans theoretical model. This trans theoretical model really goes into. Thanks, Victoria. Everyone's hitting the thumbs up. Cool. We got almost 50 thumbs up. That's awesome. Right there is 50. So we want to look at it like this. The trans theoretical model looks at the stages of change, the stages of readiness to change that a person goes through. Okay, I'm going to break that down for you real quick. So the pre-contemplation phase, which is this first one, this is a phase where the person doesn't even know about the situation. Let's take someone wanting to lose weight, let's say. Let's say someone wants to lose weight and it's December. It's December and Christmas hasn't happened yet. Uh, any of the other holidays haven't happened yet. Uh, we've just had Thanksgiving here in the United States. People who are watching this in Europe, UK, Australia, then um, even though it might be summer down in Australia at that time, all those things haven't happened yet. This person is not thinking currently about losing weight. They don't even know. They're not even contemplating it. So pre-contemplation, it's like they're blind or like they're asleep, right? So pre-contemplation, who doesn't like the cute dog picture? Pre-contemplation is all about them not knowing and just being completely asleep to the situation and the concept of change in that area. So I, would, I was just about to say, how many of you raise your hand? This isn't a live thing where I can see you guys. Um, so if you know people like that, and sometimes you're attempting to sell people like that, then just hit yes in the comments, please. Because the pre-contemplation phase really looks at the fact that in the area of what you're selling, the person is asleep. So in terms of weight loss, they're completely asleep. Let's say someone needs to buy a car. This person isn't even thinking about buying a new car at all. It's not even on their mind. So th think about that. They drive past advertising. They drive past marketing all the time. However, it's not even on their, it's not even uh, coming into their frame. The contemplation phase, this is when they start to wake up and they're like, hmm, I now know that I need something. I'm not there yet. I'm not making the decision yet. I'm now contemplating change. No action has been taken yet, right? How much action? No action has been taken. And people will sometimes think and fool themselves that they're taking action when really they're just still thinking about it. So when you consider that, that in the contemplation phase, people are considering some change, but they're not really ready for it yet. Then what happens is we move into the preparation and planning phase. Still no action. This is when people might call you. They might ask you for prices. People go shop around at gyms. They go look. You know, So sometimes you might find that someone hits New Year's, 
New Year's resolutions, and it's here. Okay, I'm thinking about it. Someone might pre-contemplate in that week after Christmas and before New Year. And even if people don't uh, celebrate Christmas, regardless of their faith, then those are kind of timings that happen in our, at least in the retail business. So people will go and they look for a, a sale after Christmas and before New Year. And then they're in this planning phase. So the planning is they're preparing, but they're still not taking action, right? It's like they're on the prowl. I want those results. I'm thinking about it. I, I want the hot body or I need the new car, but I'm shopping around. I'm doing my tech research. Uh, what's the right fill in the blank to get? What kind of shoes are going to fit this outfit that's come the, for this event or speaking event that I've got coming up? Um, true, true, Victoria, right? And all the ladies on the call, I hate to generalize there. Um, then, because I like a good pair of shoes myself, if you've seen me on stage. So this planning phase is like the prowl. Okay, I'm starting to look. And I would say raise your hand. There's no, uh, there's no hand up comment here. Um, if you find that people come into your business, if you find people that call you, reach out to you on the internet, on social media, or if you have a brick and mortar business, they come in and see you, this is typically the phase they're at, right? Now, if anyone knows this psychological model, consider and let me know when it comes to sales, and I know there's some salespeople on the call, and this is where, or on this uh, Facebook Live, then this is where I want to revolutionize this, and I promise that I'm going to give you value and give you thoughts that even sales trainers, even people who do sales, may not have considered before. So if you have a business, this is what people are coming into you in this phase of psychology, how are they considering your product? There's a word, and I wonder if anyone can throw it out there. So what type of buyer are they, or how are they viewing your product? And if you, I'll give you a little hint. If you know stocks or trading, then that might give you a little hint. They're shopping and they're viewing your product in a certain way. And it's so important for you to understand this so that you can know what to do pre-leading into the sale and definitely know what to do when you're in the sales conversation because those are 90, 80, like probably 80% right, of what's going to get you the results of what's going on in that chunk, not actually what people are typically doing. So if anyone... Um, just hit it on the head, exactly. I'm gonna bring that on the screen. Like a commodity. Props to you, Jess. People are shopping and they're viewing this like a commodity. What does that mean? That means that people are are sifting through your, your products and they're shopping typically based on criteria and price. That means how big is it or uh, what size shoe is it? Um, how much is the gym membership per month? How many classes do I get? Is there a swimming pool? And it's not really based on value at all. It's not based on value at all. This is the people who are coming to you, though. And so Jess is down with sales training. What percentage of the population of buyers does this represent? So in terms of your, your pool of your target market, this represents a certain percentage of people who come in to to see you and they're shopping like a commodity. This is where the reason there's a, a leopard right here, the reason that you have a, uh, a situation in terms of difficulty, let's say sometimes closing the sale, is that because of this, you are up against the battle. I'm just giving some time to see if anyone uh, adds a comment to that. So this accounts for, I think I can put up text on here as well. <laughs> Too high. It's actually really, really low. 7%. So 7% 7 of the buyers, the possible market is coming to you actively planning, actively shopping around. And 
all of the people in your network, all of your competitors, let's say, all of the other people are fighting over that 7%. Thanks for commenting, Jess, right? They're fighting over that 7%. And this is why when you hear about a buyer's economy in terms of, or a buyer's market for things like real estate is that it's a buyer's market when there's a surplus of say, uh, sellers and there's a, a, a shorter amount of buyers, meaning the supply is high, the demand is low. And so therefore they can just shop around and ask for things that they want. That is not a situation you want to be in. However, for the, the biggest percentage of people coming to you, this is where they're at. So how many of you would like to close more sales? How many of you would like to help more people knowing that in order to help them, they've got to purchase your product or they've got to purchase a service or work with you. And you can only give them that benefit when you actually help them on the other side. So how many of you want to do that? And I'm going to dive into this. hit the hearts button if you already got some value out of that. Some people are doing thumbs ups for moving forward anyway. That's all good. By the way, thanks everyone for being on this Facebook Live. Thank you for some of you who have shared it already. Uh, Rosalia right here. Jennifer, awesome, awesome, awesome. Yep. Great. So if this is 7%, we got a problem. And that 7% are coming in. It's like the person who already knows they want to start working out. It's the beginning of January and they're saying, hey, can you please waive your startup fee? I know, I know, I know you have this startup fee or initiation fee. I'm not paying that. It's January. You want my business. And the salesperson's like, yeah, I really do want your business. I got targets. Okay, fine. Let's do something there. Or someone asks for extra guest passes. Or if you're going for a car, someone's saying, can you throw in the mats? Can you knock off something from sticker price? Can you do something for me? Because I'm in the driving seat, pun intended, and I'm driving the sale as the customer. That's the 7% and they drain your energy. So often they're not the 20% of market people that drive 80% of your sales and your revenue. They're not those people. In fact, what we need to do is we need to understand that in this trans theoretical model that we have to go back to the pre-contemplation phase and the contemplation phase. You need to make it your efforts to grab the other percent of people, right? So there's about 64%. There's a chunk of percent of people who are always gonna be asleep and they're never gonna buy from you. That's fine and that's totally okay. But if the 7% are coming in hungry with like salivating saying, it's my way or I'm going to one of your competitors, we need to really go back to here. And this is where I call that journey-based marketing that leads to journey-based sales, journey-based selling. So what that means is you need to educate your customer or your prospect in a way that takes them back psychologically and you need to go over the pre-contemplation phase. What does that mean? That means you have to bring up thoughts about things that are in their blind spot, so to speak. So you need to bring up things in your area and uh, I said I would bring on someone okay that's it rosalia had said abuse survivors so if you educate parents and kids on body safety boundaries and consent i'm gonna guarantee that people will come in and they will tell you exactly how they want that to go true or true would you agree with that in terms of they're gonna say this is what i need this is what i'm looking for can you do this And while, of course, there's going to be people who are open and say, what do you suggest? You're the expert. A lot of times they're going to have their preconceived, pre-contemplated idea of what it's like to work with you and how it's going to go. Any moms or dads, any parents on here, uh, now or on the replay, 
who go, you know, it's like daycare. You go in, you say, this is how I need it. I need to drop off here. I need to pick up here. I need to make sure the allergies are taken care of. I need to make sure that this is going on and this is going. There's a lot when we're shopping as a com- for commodities. And if you didn't know where that came from, because Jess uh, seems to be very knowledgeable in this area, commodity is things like coffee, corn, soybeans or, or commodities, things that are traded as everyday products. So yes, our brand loyalty might be toward uh, an organic coffee shop or a high-end coffee shop. However, the coffee bean itself is a commodity. So when you're buying based on relationship equity, when you're buying based on value, you might buy and pay $17, $18 a pound for coffee because it's got a brand sticker on it. You know there's some history behind it. That's great. But when it comes to just coffee for coffee for coffee, then that's going to be traded at the at the level of what the market says. It might be twelve dollars a pound. Uh, it might be eight dollars a pound, and that will fluctuate based on the markets, meaning the stock market at the time. And that's commodities trading. So when someone is coming in, they're saying, "Look, I know what gym memberships are. I have a picture in my mind of how it's supposed to be, and you either fit my picture and I buy, or you don't fit my picture and I don't buy." So if that resonates and if that paints a picture and opens up some some new thoughts on sales and sales conversations, which obviously is how the only way to convert a, a sale, then uh, hit the thumbs up, hit the like button, hit hit anything on there just to and shoot some comments. If you have any questions, feel free to add them in there. So what I'm saying is that even though someone comes to you and they're in the planning phase and they want to move into the action phase, which is actually where, let me take this off so you can see, if they wanna move into the action phase, which is where they, they're they actually gonna take action, so that is, I've already joined the gym and now I'm working out, I'm now getting progress towards my results, then they've gotta get through the sale, which is where this preparation and planning moves into action. They're sitting there thinking that they're at this conversation. You as a salesperson, you as a business owner, as someone who has something of value, and I'm going to just have to assume that what you're offering is of amazing value. And I don't just mean like, oh, yeah, give value. I mean, that's your responsibility from an integrity piece, from a a call to action is what can you strip? What can you cut away that's not valuable? How can you add more value and stack the value so that you really create transformational work? Uh, that's a that's a deeper thing that I go into in trainings in taking it from transactional to transformational. When we can take sales from a transaction to a transformation, that's what journey-based selling is all about. So what we have to do is we have to go back to the contemplation phase and we have to ask powerful questions. This is where understanding language and psychology and the power of language in a question and how we can uncover the thought process behind that with a, with a very powerful question, then that really helps. So asking people where they are, where they wanna go is great. Asking them how they're gonna feel once the thing is been achieved is a great question. How do you know what look what success looks like when you've actually achieved it? What would it look like? What would it feel like? What would it sound like? What would you say to yourself? What would other people say about you? Do you have a picture in mind? Is there other people in that picture? Uh, it could be to do with their, uh, Jess says, yes, transactional to transformational, love it. Thanks, Jess, that's what it's all about. And that is then going to bring up what we would call an internal representation. This is now going into the neurology and the neuroscience behind how human behavior works. And sales is really part, for me, and journey-based selling is all about behavior change, behavior, uh, human behavior modification through psychology and matching them there. Uh, Rosalia says, yes, I'm focusing on transformation. That's awesome. So the transformation has to be built into this contemplation phase. I'm going to say that again. So when we look at the trans theoretical model, the pre-contemplation, which fires up the contemplation, that someone says, I wasn't thinking about my weight, and then Thanksgiving and Christmas and my my job's holiday party and then another party and then New Year's and all that stacked up. And now, for whatever reason, there's a, there's a, a desire that's popped up. That could be a pain 
a move away from pain desire, such as I can't button my jeans up the same way. It could be the way I feel in the, and when, the way I look in the mirror and the way I feel when I wake up or just what I'm not getting things done. I'm nervous, different things like that. If there's anxiety, if there's jitters, uh, more of a hyper, or there could be a sedation, depressive things and, and feelings like that. We have to go back to this phase and trigger new thoughts around contemplation in a direction that they weren't thinking about. Okay, Ben, let's make this more practical. So again, if someone's coming in for abuse counseling, if they're coming in to think about prevention as well as dealing with issues on abuse, and feel free, by the way, I love making trainings more practical and more targeted. Uh, That's the benefit of this isn't just generic advice. It's, again, years, 18 plus years of of me doing this in the field is then Jennifer says, what about sales to help raise funds via fundraiser? Great question. It's the same thing. Uh, We'll talk about that in a second. So this is how I want to make it as targeted and the, the rewards for showing up live on a live is you get to ask the questions and have me tailor the conversation specifically for you. So what you, we need to do is we need to get them to think about things they weren't thinking about. Which means that even if they want to come in and drive the conversation and say, no, 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 I don't want to hear about that. I just want to know how much it costs. What's my down payment? When can I get started? Is there a contract? How do I cancel? They're going to come in with their list of desires or their list of of criteria, so to speak. What color is it? Uh, How much is it? Is it on sale? Et cetera, et cetera. Uh, Rosalie says, I offer an online course and a membership so they don't even know how critical it is to empower versus overprotect their kids. Feel free to expand on that a little bit more when you say uh, they don't know, they don't even know how critical it is. Wow, you got really big there. (laughs) They find my content full of fear and anxiety to teach this to their kids. Yep. So... You're welcome, Jennifer. So, Rosalia, in your content, in the content that you're putting out that drives people to your course page or your membership, or even putting in a pre-module before they start, however, that's not so much about the sales aspect, I would highly recommend when building the content and the flow of your course is to have a a module that takes them back through this process even if they purchased is to say okay what were you thinking about before you started did you even know this so in the area of abuse do we even know have we even considered about framing and the person's perspective on them their own identity before the abuse happened do they know about attachment theory attachment in psychology in terms of how as they've shifted and grown maybe into teenage years, then how, sorry, I'm reading comments at the same time. The transformation is that they become empowered and confident. Sure, that's the transformation. It's not fully the benefit in their life. Um, You would want to flesh that out in terms of your messaging so that they can get a picture of what life looks like on the other side of it. And I'm sure you have that. I just, um, going to respond to the comment as it came up there. And so, the, the pre-contemplation, contemplation, preparation phase, it's so important for you to take people back into those thoughts before they spring forward. It's kind of like priming the bow. We got to go back and we got to ask, okay, so have you thought and considered how will you feel three or six months from now if you go about this the way you're thinking about going about it? Yes, you might feel a bit more aware. There's more consciousness around the topic. Yes, you might have broken some of the awkwardness in terms of having conversations about sex, about drugs, about parties, about people, uh, about exposure, about um, self, maybe self-defense and discipline. And have you thought about this? And how would it feel for you three to six months from now if you don't get the results you want, if you don't have a more harmonious conversation with your kids, if you don't have more inclusion into what they're thinking? Then what? 
Now that gets a powerful driver, emotional driver, in order for change that isn't so much based on the logic because human beings make decisions based on emotion. And we need to connect to that emotion. Andrew Reed, how's it going, says, curious how you would apply this to selling photography and video services. Thank you. You're welcome. And look at that for a cool picture for a photographer. Uh, great question. I'm gonna hit. I'm gonna hit on all these. So we had fundraising, and now we have photography and video. So Rosalia says that's very powerful. Awesome. Super glad that you got um, value from that. And please, 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 if you do, and if I kind of hit a point, please comment so then I can move on. Uh, as you can see, I could probably I can do this for multiple days. I do. Uh, multi-day trainings on this and I want to keep the live uh, uh, probably a, into an hour just to wrap up to respect time so to go back to Jennifer who says what about sales to help via funds via a fundraiser so it's not about funding the project it's never about funding the project people who donate funds we have to talk about this the radio station um, I'm sure that Jess knows this, but what's the radio station that everybody's listening to? You know, like KCRW, KCLA, uh, KISS FM, you know, what's the radio station that everybody is listening to bar none on the planet, no matter where you are. It's like Elon Musk put that whole Wi-Fi net everywhere and everybody can get this radio station. What is the number one, the only radio station that everybody is listening to? I need to do one of those dating game or, or whatever it is, countdowns. Do, do, do. Jeopardy. Uh, here we go. Come on, come on, come on. What's the one radio station? NPR. <laughs> Thank you for answering. <laughs> there isn't one, Andrew says. Here's what it is. And I thought Andrew would get it. It's WIIFM, the number one radio station that everybody is listening to everywhere is WIIFM, and I'm going to give a few seconds. Who knows what that is? What's in it for me the WIFM W-I-I-F-M everybody Andrew says wow never heard of it what's up brother uh, so okay if you walk away with just one thing from this training it's the WIFM the W-I-I-F-M what's in it for me it's so important because everybody is looking for what's in it for them someone who donates millions of dollars a year to nonprofit organizations or charities. Jennifer is also saying not heard of it. Um, Victoria says, yep, literally what I remind people of all the time when I'm marketing. By the way, please don't go to your uh, car radio or anything like that and try to find WIIFM. There isn't, it's not like KCR or um, NPR or anything like that. Um, so WIIFM, what's in it for me? If I'm going to fundraise your project, and Jennifer, if you want to share with me what that is about, I've done sales trainings in national nonprofits where they call it major gifts or fundraising, and it it's, comes down to the same psychology, and it's very important, and I'm going to give a distinction there. Same for Andrew. If you're selling photography or videography, you're doing it wrong. Right, We're never, ever, ever selling photography or videography. That is the process that gets to the outcome that they want, the what's in it for me. And even when we know benefits and features, okay, the features are that the camera has, you know, this aperture and this shutter speed and this lens and battery length that's this long and you can, you know, dunk it underwater or, or all those kind of things. It has Wi-Fi attached to it. Those are the features. And people get the benefit. Well, the benefit is you can take a picture and you can capture something. Okay, 
that's good surface level sales stuff. I talked about promising you deep, deep, deep value. You got to look at the benefit of the benefit of the benefit of the benefit. What I call the emotionally charged benefit, the ECB, which is way down the line. That's the why of the why of the why of the why. So why do I want photo photos? I want photos so that I can present the way I look and connect with people on my website. Eh. No, that's not what you want. Well, I want people to know, like, and trust me more on my website so that they can buy my product. Eh. That's not even what we want either. Why do you want that? And so who knows what this is? Anyone know what the WizGat is? I'm going to leave that up there for a little bit. Let's see if Andrew can redeem himself. <laughs> Who knows what the whiz get is? So you got to look at the benefit of the benefit of the benefit. That helps us go past this preparation phase when someone's coming in saying, I want this. I want a gym membership, 24-hour access. Suzanne's raising her hand saying she knows what it is. <laughs> okay, anybody else? What's the whiz gap? Someone's coming in saying, I want the, um, I want abuse services like this. Through Avon, we're able to use the products to help raise funds for nonprofits. Okay, Jennifer, so is it Avon that you're working on? So even then, that would be using raising funds for nonprofits as a side benefit which is an altruistic benefit, great. Rosalia, look at that, so close. What's so good about that? Or you could say great. So what's so great or what's so good about that? You get to raise funds for nonprofits. And what's so good about that? Oh, well, then you can get your pro you can make a charitable donation and write it off on your taxes. What's so good about that? Well, now you can save more money and give more meaning in your life. Okay, that might be more emotionally charged for some people. What's so good about that? Ultimately, and it is true, we're going to get to some deep core emotions, what we call deep human drives. Uh, you may have heard of six human needs, you may have heard of values things that drive our life. And when we can uncover those values and our belief systems and how those are, are deep in our psychology, and then when you learn how you can tweak those in sales, so you can go in, identify someone's value, package your sale, and put it back to them, we call that strategies training, then you can make a sale easily. And the whole reason, well, why do you want to make a sale? You got to raise your hand and say that you, want, you have something that you believe can absolutely transform their life or their world or their family's life and it's not just about a transaction right we're going from transactional to transformational that's the difference about the sales uh, training and sales technology so then you move into action and here it is right so what's so good about that is even it's not necessarily just about getting into action sales training for photography and videography well people are going to hear you people are going to see you and jennifer says for example i want to approach a local nonprofit that helps low income families provide clothes and baby items to moms and families in need okay so do you notice that there is some level of logic to this there's a rational benefit there what well, makes sense let's provide for low-income families let's provide them with clothes and baby items for moms who are stressed out and trying trying to juggle what they're dealing with uh, jennifer says with the money that is raised they can buy these items sure that is a left brain, and, and to be honest, I don't agree with left brain, right brain. We have a lot of interconnectedness going on in the brain. Um, however, you know, studied neuroscience in the brain for many years. So it's more of a logical, rational reason. Oh, I'm going to buy these products anyway from Avon, and some of my money goes to fund those? That makes sense. That's great. I feel a little bit better, but I don't really. 
but it makes sense to justify my emotional purchase. So as human beings, we buy based on emotion and we justify it based on logic. I'm gonna say that again. As human beings, we make decisions based on emotion, either the emotion that we want or avoiding the emotion we don't want or based on the emotion we're feeling in the moment or based on the emotion that we think that it will bring us down the line right? From other people. So our logical, rational mind then is like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it was a good thing to do. I look at my credit card statement and I can, I can be at peace with it. So by saying that you're going to buy these products and you're going to donate to nonprofits, great. However, when you want to communicate that, what you would want to do, Jennifer, in this situation is find some moms and find some children and ask them how their life is different because of these products. Because I'm, I guarantee you, the person buying Avon products, who then ha they realize that they have kind of like this additional altruistic benefit of helping moms, even if they're a mom, even if they've been through it, even if they have a feeling of, well, I, I went through a period of time where I didn't have and I was lacking, and this is I, can, I know what it feels like, I have gratitude and appreciation for where I'm at now, it's still not the same as connecting to that child who had a Christmas or a birthday, and they were able to open a gift, and the mom was able to provide for their child and have the child feel safe and secure and loved. And then we can identify, especially with Rosalia, markers in the brain that say, this experience under the age of six years old is going to dictate how successful they can be for years to come. It will decrease their desire for alcohol and drugs and any addictive things like sex addiction or people or gambling or any of those different things because of what was going on in the brain formed under the age of seven or then their ability to bond and connect with other people between different ages. So these are things I map the different ages and developmental stages of the human in deeper trainings that I go into. Those are things you can guys can, can ask me about. And so it's very important that as you're framing it, you don't get hung up on nonprofit and donations. You got to ask, well, what's so good about that? It's not the end stage benefit for someone to feel as if you can have an effect on someone else's life. You can be there and you can be an angel for that child in a way that they didn't have that. And this mother who is facing with dignity issues and a father maybe who's facing providing issues of, you know, was I good enough? Could I, was I adequate enough? And how can I be, you know, going through this time and not putting a food on, on my uh, family's table at Thanksgiving? This is why someone like Tony Robbins, who had that experience, saw the doorway, saw his father's face when he's like, I don't want to accept this food, then goes out and feeds millions of people. It is not about the nonprofit. It's not about saving money. It's not even about, ooh, two for one. I can spend some money and make a donation. It's too logical. So here's the thing to notice about fundraising and nonprofits. And when we go back to this planning phase, when you, what you're saying currently matches their planning phase, psychology, all, excuse me, all the things that they've come in and they've thought, I want this and you've shared it with them and it matches, they'll buy. And I guarantee you're leaving 75 at least percent of sales on the table because there are four different buying personalities that I've mapped. Uh, this is very different than a lot of other uh, personality and buying personality things that, that are out there. Uh, just so happens that it came up that way. And very much like love languages, raise your hand or hit, hit a comment or let's say thumbs up or something like that if you've heard of love languages. So the, the concept of languages of love came about long before Gary Chapman, who's the guy who wrote that book, um, but borrowed it from, from one of the the uh, women, Virginia Satir, that if you've ever heard about NLP, NLP studied very, very effective therapists, doctors, 
business people. And so NLP isn't really anything. There's a lot of people who teach NLP. It was like, it's a thing. It's not a thing. It's, I say it's everything and nothing. It's the ability to look at what works and then be able to put that into action. And so Virginia Satir, she would talk, she was a marriage and family therapist and she would talk to parent to, uh, to couples and she would listen and they'd be like, there's no love here. And, um, he doesn't love me because of this. And he would say, she doesn't love me because of this. Or she would say this, she would say that. And ultimately, she realized that someone is trying to give love in a way that the other person doesn't want to receive it. So remember early on when I said banishing the myth that people don't like to be sold to or people don't like to sell? It's false. If I had tickets to your favorite artist or band or movie or uh you know a dinner with one of your just most loved people that you would love to have dinner with and pick their brains Uh, rosalie has to go we'll have to catch the replay thank you so much i'm mid-launch of my program right now this is so helpful rosalie awesome feel free to reach out to me uh i do want to help you with your launch if you're in the middle of it and putting this into practice. So yeah, it's super important that when you go through the planning phase with someone that you don't just meet them where they're at. The reason to go back to the pre-contemplation pre-contemplation place and install these new things to think about that take them to the end stage benefit is that then by the time when you come into action and maintenance <laughs> When you come into the maintenance phase, then what you're doing is it's as if you're serving, which a lot of people, when we started this call uh, or live, they were saying, I want to come from a place of service. I want to sell from a place of service. However, if you're attempting to sell from a place of service and attempting to not be pushy, you'll get it wrong because it's it's fake in its in its own way. You might hold off when you need to to say something more direct. You might skirt around it and not really come to the point, which will annoy someone that actually their their buying personality needs it like that. And vice versa, you might then ask for the sale and break trust because they're not ready yet. So it's very important that when you get to a place of wanting to put all of this together as the trans theoretical model, you take them back to the places so you go through the entire model with them and you don't just allow them to jump in and come to you so-called ready. Even if they are talking the language, they've read your website, they've watched your videos, they're like, I want to do this training, I want to do this uh, program with you, I want to buy your online course, or I want to work with you, anything like that, that's great. And you don't want to push them away. You want to ask questions that wake them up from areas that they're asleep, have them contemplate things, and get them involved. So now that uh, I've gone through that, please give me uh, any feedback or any questions you have that are lingering. Ultimately, as much as I've finished, it's time to get started. Because you got to do this in your own business, and and I want to be here to help you with that. So feel free to... um, to let me know if I haven't covered anything. I know Andrew Reed talked about photography and videography. So ultimately the big question you start with is where do you need to meet them at within the model? So if someone is saying, I just need a headshot, I just need some photography done, I just need a video done. Thanks Victoria, Victoria says absolutely amazing. Thank you so much. Um, Please let me know Victoria, one specific thing you took away because I love your energy and your enthusiasm. And I always love to say, what's one big takeaway and what's one action? What's one way you're going to sell or communicate differently because of a result of this? Jennifer says, thank you so much. Yeah, so in terms of then, Andrew, when you come back here and someone says, I want a headshot or I need a video, they're dictating, and if you if you weren't on in the beginning part, they're coming in with their criteria. I need it like this, it needs to be three minutes, I want it shot in 1080p. You're like, uh, we need to get back to ultimately what are we doing here? Have them consider that video, maybe consider when we move into the maintenance and action perspectives, how can we shoot video so that you can use it for multiple 
uses, right? What we might call multicasting. We'll do one day of video shooting or photography, but now you get multiple uses out of it without it looking the same or duplicated. Well, now the value just went up because I thought I was, I was asking you for this and it was gonna meet this need. Now you're saying, well, I'm gonna offer you this and it's gonna meet this need. The value is through the roof. But you gotta get to what's in it for them, which is so much more than just simply a headshot or a video or a photo shoot for my wedding. For example, it's not about capturing the wedding. It's about capturing moments that are the one day that everyone going into a wedding hopes and believes that they will never have that experience ever again, right? <laughs> we don't wanna go in with a money back guarantee on a wedding. And so the, uh, Jess says there's such beauty and service in engaging this process and not taking it for granted. Like you said, not just skipping ahead without really digging in. Thank you, Jess. That's super important. I appreciate you mentioning that. So it, it's very important we get to the real benefit. Ultimately, what will this do for you? It will allow you to replay the video for years to come so that you can relive those moments. It'll ignite more romance. It'll keep the fire burning in your marriage through thick and thin. These pictures that will crystallize Andrew Reitz is cool. I do that with every client once they're on the phone with me before buying. And um, and I just want to say to that, Andrew, is is make sure that when you're doing it, that you're not doing it the way that you want it done, if that makes sense. So what I mean by that is that, you know, from a point of meeting them where they're at in the model, the dream big is what would they feel like when they've already achieved it? If you're then saying, look, this is how I need it to be done, and we're going to go through these things, that could be a quite jolt for someone who is just a big picture thinker. Definitely going to do a training more on the this uh, the different buying personalities and how that can, can be put into play. Um, Ultimately, your activation is to know what are your ideal clients and where are they within the model right now. So if, you, if you're taking notes, if you came here to be active in this, then just ask yourself, where are my clients within this model right now? And when they're coming to me, how can I craft messages? How can I meet them where they're at within it so that you can effectively take them to where they need to go? Uh, it's very important, very critical. And then uh, ultimately the next steps is I would love to help you build yours. So let's look here. Jennifer says, I took away that I need to dig a little deeper on the benefit of my sale. One action is I'll contact the nonprofit and tell them how I can help them. Yes, and ask them ultimately because the nonprofit will have metrics and information about their clients. So they'll be able to share with you, for example, in the last 12 months, per dollar that's donated, the amount, the amount of impact. And if they don't have that, then you can add value by asking them to find that out. And uh, Jess says, to really connect to true value instead of just price and logistics. Yes, it's never about the price and it's never about logistics. If it is, you're selling a commodity. And if you are selling a commodity, that's fine. Just understand that you're at the bottom of the bottom in the totem pole when it comes to sales in that aspect. And if you've created a product that's a commodity, the question then comes, and feel free to engage us in that. We do design work on how to design a training, how to design experiences, and design learning for online trainings in that how can I build this so it's not a commodity? Right? We are no longer in the information business. It's not about information. As you can see, and I, if we went back, I could redo this training and point out how, I'm about, how I've done exactly what I've asked or I'm about to say. How can you make it more implementation focused? How can you make it so it's more about people implementing what they've learned here than just the information? Right. Because we've talked about value. We've talked about ultimately, um, you know, if you tell them the benefits, we've talked about engaging and ask questions. OK, sure. But everyone may have heard that before. 
Uh, I'm super excited that people hadn't heard the with them. You got to, got to, got to focus on what's in it for me. Everybody's sitting there saying, what's in it for me? And at the top of this training, I asked you, what is in it for you? What's your intention? If you want to sell more from a place of service, hopefully you'll agree. Hit the heart button and share this on your personal profiles. Uh, feel free to share this live. I think you can share it into groups that you're part of to, to spread this with people who can really benefit from it because this helps you be of service. And it doesn't help you be of service the way that you feel like you want to be of service. Uh, no offense meant by that, but trust me, it's not about us. It's about the customer. Uh, Jennifer says, mind blown. I didn't think of that to ask for the metrics and per dollar donation. Exactly. Because someone then who says, who maybe the person who you're engaging, not necessarily buying Avon products. And this is where you could say, hmm, maybe it's instead of trying to say, if you buy my product, $2 is going to go to a nonprofit sell your product, make a bunch of money, and then go to someone who who isn't even worried about buying the product and say, "Here, here's the deal. You're a savvy investor. You like to make good decisions, right? Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm awesome. And you love making a great return on investment for your money, don't you? Yeah, that's why I've made so much money in the stock market. Thank you so much for floating my boat, right? Again, What's in it for them? Everybody's playing that radio station. What's in it for them? No matter what they're what they're saying on the surface. So ultimately, then when you say, I've got a great investment for you, you're going to donate a dollar and you're going to receive 100% tax write-off for that dollar. That's awesome. However, you're going to make $7 for every $1 in terms of the impact on single mothers and children. And I don't know about you, but I wonder if you had a parent who struggled when you were growing up. So often, some of our key drivers of motivation are from pain from our past. That's a topic for a completely different uh, Facebook Live. And so some people who make a lot of money, they're being driven by this avoidance of poverty and pain. And they'll say, totally, I grew up, eight people in one room, sitting around the stove for heating at night because that's all we had. So then when you can say, I'm going to give you complete tax write-off and for every $1 you put in, you're basically going to get the equivalent of $7 for women and children around the country or around the planet. They're going to say, that's a great decision. And I love to feel so smart with my money. I love to get a deal and save on taxes. And I love to make seven out of one. So you're not trying to pull their heartstrings on, oh, wouldn't it be so great? They might say, look, I donate $2 million a year to charitable benefits, as it is. They get nice dinners, they get their name on, on events, and they get to write it off on taxes. So you got to think, what is it in it, what's in it for them, not just what you think is in it for them? And that comes back to asking questions. It comes back to understanding psychology and going back through the model so that you can meet people where they're at and then you can communicate in a way that connects with them and pulls them through the model so that they can come out to the other side take powerful action which is really where this model ends up take massive action move into a maintenance phase and ultimately that then cycle ends and the next one begins which is another phase of what they didn't even know that they didn't even know that they wanted or that was possible. And if you keep doing that, then you will constantly transform your prospects or your customers rather than just transact. And I think that's the big takeaway of the day. When you can shift your thinking from transactional to transformational, then ultimately it works. Um, I do have a virtual training, a 10-week training that I take people through. Uh, if you're interested in that, then feel free to let me know. Ultimately, it helps you know what to say, how to say it, and when to say it. Uh, it is something that we're bringing to you soon. But because you're on this call and because I'm talking about sales, then you would love to know that for your specific product, what is it that you need to say to someone based on where they're at? How do you evoke the emotion? How do you ask questions that is going to create pictures in their mind of that feeling? Oh, that feels so good. What's in it for me when I get that? And they associate it neurologically to your product, your service, or working with you, the photographs you take, um, the impact of what, it, what it's like to have their name in 
Entrepreneur Magazine, for example, or what it's like when their child hits 21 or when their child goes into a marriage and when they have kids and they don't have to further the cycle of abuse. This is for uh, Rosalia when she's watching the replay. Um, For Jennifer, in terms of working with fundraising, how do you say what you need to say so that the person doesn't just think, oh, the information you're telling me about this um, fundraising for nonprofits is really just trying to get me to buy your Avon product, which maybe it is. And that's what is called making, helping people make an empowered decision. That's cool. That's kind of a sales tactic. But ultimately, instead of going tactics and going again to transformation, how can you help weave that contribution into the whole? Then could you say, you know, how amazing would it be for your kids to learn right now that this product that they're buying, whether it's a health product, whether it's a household product, and I'm going to go beyond just Avon. So if it goes into uh, people have things where it's like nutrition supplements or it's cleaning products or uh, maybe it's clothing, maybe it's beauty products. How can you connect your children to be aware right now generationally that when they're buying things, they're thinking about ecology, they're thinking about helping other people, they're thinking about it on that level. That is then when you shift their mind to, wow, that's a completely different thought process. And then just really understanding when to say what in what order. As we go through the buying personalities, then I've not just mapped out how do you speak to one person, kind of like their love language. How do you also cover it, for example, if you have a sales page or you're doing a training and you can't figure out where they're at, what do you say in what order and when so that ultimately by the end they feel ready to take action now and they feel like, okay, wow, I've been hit on the points. I get the big picture, the why. This is going to shift my whole business from transforming people and I'm going to be able to do it from service and I'm going to know what to say and how to say it and when to say it. I want to do that. So that's a little bit more information about that. Again, thank you very much for being on here. Uh, We call it the Message Makeover Training. And uh, you can see more at influencingmillions.com slash makeover. And we can do a makeover on your sales offer, the structure of the offer, on how you communicate about the offer, what you write from a copywriting on the page, and how you say if you get on the phone with people or if you're doing videos or you're doing... um, speaking events, things like that. So again, influencingmillions.com is our website. If you're on this page, then hopefully you've liked the page. Please share this Facebook Live. We're going to have a lot more people. Yeah, go ahead and hit the hit the heart button if you, if you got value from this today. And again, please, please, please in the comments. And if you're watching on the replay, that means you as well. Say what's one big takeaway you got from the training and what's one action you commit to taking which then we could follow up with you. And that's called accountability. We can say, okay, in the week after this or a couple weeks after this, did you take action on that? And how did it improve your sales? How did it improve your communication? Uh, What happened? You know, maybe it could be that someone just said that, um, thanks, Jennifer. Maybe it's someone just says that, hey, this really improved the way that I understand what you're offering to me. You'd said it before, but it really connected with me this time. Jess says, thank you so much fun. I geek out about chatting about this stuff. Uh, Me too, Jess, anytime and anytime you want to collaborate, anyone on here, you know, the whole point, please, again, like this page, come back to this page and share it with other people. Uh, We will have a group with uh, that will go out. It'll be a free Facebook group for trainings that we'll do. We'll have a lot of different experts on our team. But also, if you have something that you want to share, then reach out to us. That's part of what we do is You know, people we work with, we help craft their message, craft their training, but then we also help share it because that's how we can really influence millions on the planet. I realize that, hey, you might have to hear the same message from someone with hair or someone with blue eyes or from a female or from someone with a different background. I shared with you on this uh, that I had a near-death experience at the age of 18, and that shaped my whole world. So my what's in it for me is if I can touch more people and we can have a ripple effect around the planet, that's part of my legacy. I don't have to know that I necessarily did it to every single person. It's about spreading so it lives on way beyond my lifetime because I realized early on how short my life really is. So my goal is how big of an impact can I have with my time here. And so all of you watching this, participating, as we got 400 
um, thumbs ups or or uh, interactions on this, a bunch of likes and hearts, action, adding that on my calls, number one takeaway, adding the how will you know this is a success, what will you see, hear, and feel. Definitely, that gets an end stage picture. And um, we talk about it, calling it an internal representation, which really means, and if you think about it like this, that the mind can then go and get that. If you were to say, you know, what do you want to eat? And the person couldn't even comprehend what it was like to eat that, then they're kind of going to feel neutral about it. If they say, oh, when I have that, I feel so good. It feel I feel so much energy, or I feel oh, I feel warm and good inside. It reminds me of childhood or the parties or a connection of time with my grandparent. Then you're gonna again, you're gonna trigger emotion. But look, there's a lot of people online talking about trigger emotion. In my opinion, in a manipulative, in a sleazy and slimy way, we're just saying that if you want to help someone transform, it doesn't just ha- happen at the mental level. Uh, I did a Facebook Live recently within um, Victoria's Facebook group, um, Spiritual AF Latinas, and I talked about that, that we have the spiritual body, the mental body, the emotional body, and the physical body. So we need to connect with people on all of those, and you need to learn how to be precise with your language, both written and verbal or email if you convert people that way, if you communicate with people online on a sales page or when you get on a phone call. And how do you say what you're saying still in an authentic way for you in a way that lands for them? So one of my uh, tweetables, one of my comments, if you want to share this out with people, uh, just go ahead and you can post it, quote Ben Patois. Um Here it is coming up. And that's how you spell my name because this is going to come from Influencing Millions. Yeah, so here's the quote. You ready for it? Let me get some last, uh, a few last uh, thumbs ups or <laughs> interactions like that. Boom. Care more about what they need to hear than what you, what, just what you want to say. I'm going to say that again care more about what the other person needs to hear than just what you want to say. By no means am I saying what you want to say isn't valuable. I'm saying how they need to hear it, what they need to hear, when they need to hear it is far more important because that's what it's about. Self-expression, you can stand on a soapbox on the corner somewhere and say whatever you feel like saying. And there's a trend where people are like, I'm just expressing myself. It hurt you. That's all on you which I don't really buy into. Communication has a co, there's a contract between two people or groups of people. So ultimately care more about what they need to hear than just what you wanna say. And if you do that, you will impact far more people. You'll increase your influence for people. They'll connect with you so much more. They'll feel that you're, you have a care for them and that you're really contributing and wanting to come from service. And you'll all definitely have more impact in their lives and which is what we all need uh, we need to remember that you'll have more income. So that's it. Influencingmillions.com. If you're interested in the makeover training, then uh, just go to influencingmillions.com forward slash makeover. And if that if works for you, if it resonates, then we'd love to work together, help you craft this. Keep coming back to this page. Share it with people. Uh, comment, even if you're watching on the replay. And until the next time, live with passion and influence millions. We'll see you in another one soon. Thanks for being here.